All right, folks, welcome back. Today's topic is 6.5 Creedmoor. And the last few 6.5 Creedmoor videos, we've kind of taken a little bit of a detour and looked at some match bullets. The 140 grain Hornady Boatail Hollow Point has been shooting sweet. Our little Thompson Center Compass rifle is shooting outstanding. But back to the initial game plan here with 6.5 Creedmoor was to test out several hunting bullets to find a really good combination for our Thompson Center Compass. We've shot quite a few of the 143 grain Hornady ELDX bullet. That's been a really good shooting bullet. The 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter, that's been a really good shooting bullet. But we did some ballistic gel tests with that Burger bullet and the results were a little bit weird. So I wanna get back to some hunting bullets, but we've got to load with the 143 grain ELDX. I wanna work through a couple other hunting bullets, get a couple more loads together, and then a few videos down the road, I want to do another gel test with some of these other bullets and see how they perform. So today we're returning back to a bullet that we shot back in the very first like break-in video we did with the Thompson Center Compass. This is the 130 grain Sierra Match King. The groups, I think we only shot 10 of them back in that video, but the groups were looking pretty good. And this is definitely a contender to be a, uh, you know, viable hunting bullet for us. Th this should be a butt kicker. So I expect these to probably perform pretty well in gel. So let's get a load worked up and get ready for that. I found something interesting. So the Sierra load data, which the Sierra load data is available on their website. They show an overall length with this bullet of 2.670. Now, way back in the first video, I tested maximum overall length with a bunch of different bullets to see what sort of throat we had in this Thompson Center Compass. What I found to be the maximum overall length with this bullet before I touched the lands of my rifling was 2.705. Now, we're at about 600 rounds through this gun, and a lot of those rounds are pretty darn hot rounds. So just out of curiosity, today I measured it again. I measured my maximum overall length with this bullet and I found that it has stretched out to 2.728. So it looks like at this point with about 600 rounds, we've got about 23 thousandths of throat erosion, I guess you would call it. And just out of curiosity, I grabbed another bullet. I actually did the same measurement with the 129 grain Hornady interlock and it gave me a number of 24 thousandths. Now, the problem is due to inexperience, I don't really have a good idea of whether that's good or bad, whether our, th our, whether our barrel is wearing faster than normal or if this is completely normal. I know that some erosion is normal. You got to keep track of it. You know, as your gun ages, you'll want to keep repeating that measurement and monitoring things as, you know, the, as the throat erodes. Another thing, like I, I took that measurement before I had even fired this gun or I think I had fired one round through the gun so I could get a fire form piece of brass to take measurements with. So it might've been that, you know, the throat or the, the start of the rifling was particularly rough. I don't know. And that, you know, just a few rounds through the barrel, the measurement might've changed a lot as things wore in a little bit and smoothed out a bit. I don't know, we're gonna keep our eye on it. Maybe, you know, like I said, we're at about 600 rounds right now. Maybe at a thousand rounds, we'll check it again and monitor things as it goes. One thing I do know, the gun is shooting better today than it ever has. The groups in a lot of our previous videos have been just absolutely outstanding. So the barrel's not shot out. It's not getting close to shot out, but you know, it's something we'll keep our eye on. So we are gonna to continue to use our Starline, our Starline brass that has the small primer pockets. This is what we've been shooting all along. Like I said, this batch is five times fired now. So this is the sixth firing on it. I'm on the second half of the batch. So we've shot 550 rounds with this. We've shot about 40 rounds of factory ammo and then a few reloads in that brass. So we are very close to that, you know, 600 round mark. If not, maybe just a touch over it. The primer for today is going to be the CCI number 41 primer. Now, if you watch the hang fire series that I did, we tested a lot of different small primers and the CCI 41 and the Remington seven and a half seem to do the best job of getting consistent ignition and not having any hang fire problems. So in the last video, we shot the Remington seven and a half, but we ended up piercing a primer. We were shooting very hot loads, but still we ended up piercing a primer, 
This gun is prone to a little bit of primer cratering, like the bolt and the firing pin, the way they are. It just craters primers. It always has. But with that Remington 7.5, I think the primer was maybe a touch soft, and we ended up piercing one. So today, I want to switch over to the CCI number 41. This does have a reputation as being a, a nice hard primer, thick cup. So I'm hoping it'll minimize our primer cratering that we've seen. We'll find out. For load data, I want to go straight off of the Sierra load data. The first powder I want to shoot is Reloader 17. Way back in that first uh, video on our Thompson Center Compass, I believe we shot 41 and 42 grains. The max charge that Sierra shows is 43.2 grains. So I want to shoot up to their max. We'll do three tenths of a grain increments, which will take us down to 42.0. So 42 up to 43.2. We're definitely shooting that top end of the range, pretty hot loads. So hopefully we just see some good velocity, but we'll have to keep our eye on, on our pressure signs. Like I said, we've shot 42 before and didn't have problems. So I feel good about starting at 42. The other powder for today is going to be Winchester 760. This is another one that uh, Sierra shows giving good velocity on their load data. They show a max charge of 44.8 grains, and that's what I want to shoot up to, 44.8. So that puts us shooting 43.6 up to 44.8. I should probably shoot four tenths of a grain increments with this powder, now that I think about it. We're starting pretty hot. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so that drops our starting charge down to 43.2. So we'll shoot 43.2 up to 44.8, four tenths of a grain increments. Hopefully we don't blow our face off. We'll keep an eye on the pressure signs. I think we'll be okay. Now for overall length, like I mentioned, the Sierra manual shows 2.670. I wanna stretch that out just a little bit. I wanna shoot 2.700, a little bit closer to the lands. My measurements showed uh, 2.728 as being max, so we'll have, you know, 28 thousandths of jump to the lands. So that should be, that should be pretty good. So that's the plan. Our batch of brass has already been prepped. It's been resized. It's been tumbled. It's all nice and shiny. It's ready for primer, powder, and bullets. So let's get to some primers. I'm using my Frankfurt Arsenal hand priming tool today. And the primer, uh, the primer pockets on our Starline brass still feel really good. If anything, they're just a touch tight here with the CCI 41. The CCI 41 has maybe just a slightly larger diameter than some of the other small rifle primers you'll find. So they sometimes go in a little bit tight and that's the case here with our Starline. So there's nothing really remarkable here with our with our charges. Case fill is going to be pretty decent with both of these powders. But it's not excessive, like we're not going to have extremely compressed loads or anything of that nature. So I just need to get them all weighed out and we will be ready for some bullet seating. Okay, as always for bullet seating here, first step, let's make sure that we're using the right seating stem that's gonna match our bullet the best. We're using Hornady custom grade dies. There are two bullet seating stems that came with the die set and one that was ordered separately, the ELD stem. The one that fits this bullet is one of the ones that comes with the uh, kit. I remember that from the earlier video, but very little wiggle, but these others, not a very good fit at all. So this is one bullet where there's one stem that is obviously the right choice. So that's what we're using. Okay, so our target overall length is 2.700 inches. Let's back out our micro adjust seating stem here. Let's 
like we're right about 2.8 right now. So let's go ahead and go down. There we go. There's a hundred thousandths. So let's seat a couple of them. Two point seven zero seven, two point seven zero eight, and two point seven zero seven. So let's go down seven thousandths. Like we've got some wiggle room here, right? What was our our jump to the lands was something like twenty five or thirty thousandths. So we don't need to be ultra precise, but there's two point seven zero zero, two point six nine nine, two point seven zero zero. So good, nice consistent numbers. Let's see a couple of our max charges. Here is Reloader 17. Yep, still a little bit of powder moving in there, so we're not quite at a compressed load with Reloader 17. And it should be the same deal with Winchester 760. Yep, and it definitely is. Got some powder moving there with Winchester 760 as well. So we've got some excess case capacity to work with if we don't hit the velocity numbers or don't see any pressure signs. Maybe we could go up higher later on. So that's really it. I just need to seat these 50 bullets and we'll be ready to hit the range. All right, folks, it's time to get this party started. This is our Thompson Center Compass. It has a 22 inch barrel with a one and eight twist. As you can see, I'm using a front rest and a rear bag. If you watched the last video, you might've noticed I had my front rest a little bit too far forward and it was hitting the sling stud. So I'm trying to move it back. I'm still trying to find that you know perfect place to have the, the front rest for maximum stability without getting inter any interference from anything. So yeah, still working on it. Our scope is a four to 16 vortex. I am using a Silencer Co. Omega Suppressor and a Magneto Speed Chronograph to get our velocity numbers. So also in the previous videos, we've kind of noticed that the first group, and especially the first shot in the first group, tends to go high and to the left. So for today's video, I do have five, I've got five cider rounds loaded up. I'm gonna shoot them all off at a steel target just to get the gun warmed up and make sure that any cold bore problems that might affect our groups will hopefully be nullified by, uh, by some ciders. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll be ready to start shooting some groups. All right, the gun is warmed up and ready to rock. We are shooting at 100 yards. The, the dots are one inch in diameter and our first load here is 42.0 grains of Reloader 17. All right, that's not a bad start. Pretty good velocity, pretty good standard deviation number, and a halfway decent group. I'm gonna try not to take any major breaks today. A lot of times after 25 rounds or so, I'll take a, I'll take a longer break, make sure the gun cools down completely. Today I'm gonna to try and keep the temperature, keep our barrel, te barrel temperature a little bit more consistent throughout. So I'm gonna extend the break between each group. I'm gonna put the chamber chiller in here a little bit, let it blow some air through the chamber and the barrel and the suppressor and try to th keep things com uh, reasonably consistent. The good news though, is that if I, if I overheat it, I start getting really bad mirage off of the suppressor. So the, so the suppressor really keeps me from getting too hot because it gets, just, gets, gets to a point where I can't really aim very well anymore. So I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Okay, 42.3 grains is next. All right, there's a good group. Yeah, the extreme spread on our velocity was a little bit gnarly. 
at 56 feet per second, but the first shot was 36 feet per second slower than all of the others. We see that so much. I can't imagine that a couple minutes with the chamber chiller blowing some air through there would cool things down enough to where it's heat related. I don't know, man. It's kind of weird, but we do see that sometimes. Pressure signs are looking good so far. So next up is 42.6 grains of Reloader 17. Man, this bullet is shooting very well, very well. So a little bit better standard deviation, extreme spread down to 32 feet per second. So that's good. But still, once again, first shot was the lowest velocity and it was the lowest by 15 feet per second. First shot was 28.15. The next lowest was the fourth shot at 28.30. That's weird, man. That first shot is always just a little slow. So I think we're getting up there with the pressure a little bit. The last group definitely had a few pieces of brass with a little shiny spot on them where the ejector was. You know, a distinct ring where the ejector was as well. But screw it. Next up, 42.9. And once again, the first shot was the slowest velocity by 31 feet per second. Now here's the crazy part, the extreme spread of the second to the fifth shot. So if basically if we take the first shot out of the equation, the extreme spread is five. So that first shot took the extreme spread from five up to 36. I don't know what to make of this. I don't know of any solution. It's just, it's something interesting to observe, I guess. So the pressure signs on that last group actually weren't bad. A few minor ejector marks, but nothing else. So let's go ahead and shoot the last group here at 43.2 grains of Reloader 17. All right, for the first time of the day, the first shot was actually not our lowest velocity. I'll tell you what, the 130 grain Sierra Match King and Reloader 17 looks to be a really good combination. Those are some excellent groups. All right, moving on to Winchester 760. Our first load is 43.2 grains. Let's see how they do. Very nice. Good looking group. The brass looks good. No pressure signs to speak of so far. Let's see if we had our low velocity first shot. Nope, actually the last, the last round was the lowest velocity. But our extreme spread was 21 feet per second. Looking good. So it is all good here to start with Winchester 760. All right, 43.6 grains is next. All right, here's something I definitely can't, uh, can't explain. The first shot on that group was 2798. It was the highest velocity by 22 feet per second. The next highest was 2276. 
So what is it about Reloader 17 that makes the first shot velocity high, which completely disappears here with Winchester 760? I don't know, man. Reloading is so weird. So weird. So the velocities are still pretty reasonable. 2777 isn't that high. And we haven't seen any pressure signs. So moving on, next up is 44.0 grains. Yeah, so once again, in this group, the first shot was in the middle of the pack as far as velocity. Weird, man. Super weird. But no pressure signs to speak of, so we're moving on. 44.4. All right, last up, 44.8 grains. All right, folks, that is looking like a pretty good target from where I'm sitting. Maybe just a touch of pressure here on the top end with Winchester 760. So, yeah, let's get back to the bench. Let's look at the brass. Let's talk it out. All right, folks, let's look, have a look at some brass. Our max charge with Reloader 17. We'll look at a couple of these guys. And there's not really much to see. Out on the range, I thought I was seeing some shiny spots, but not really. Nothing to freak out about here. Primer is pretty rounded. And this is our first uh, time using the CCI 41. You can see a little bit of, you know, uh, cratering on the primer like we've, like we've gotten used to with the CCI 450. But it's nothing like it was in the last video with the Remington 7.5. There's an ejector mark showing up for us. Got to get the light just right. So a little bit of markings, but I feel pretty good about this. I like the looks of these CCI 41s. So nothing to complain about. Here's our max charge with uh, Winchester 760. There's a little shiny spot on this last guy here. So these were definitely hot loads. We were in the upper 2,800 feet per second range. So these were no joke, but nothing super scary. And once again, nice rounded primers and the craters don't look all that bad. Okay, let's have a look at these groups. Holy moly, this bullet did a fantastic job. It's kind of funny, our worst two groups were the first group that we shot, uh, 42 grains of Reloader 17, and then the last group we shot, 44.8 grains of, grains of Winchester 760. But they were still pretty good. 0.847 and 0.826, there's not a darn thing wrong with that. I mean, these groups are really getting close to as good as I can shoot with a 16 power scope at 100 yards. So the little bit of difference we're seeing here from group to group could certainly be me. So I don't know that there's a lot that can be gained by you know, trying to break down the groups. They were all really, really good. The velocities were excellent. So in the Sierra low data, the two max charges we shot, they, they had both of them listed as 2,900 feet per second. Their test gun is a 24 inch barrel. We're shooting a 22 inch barrel. So the fact that we're 30 to 40 feet per second slower makes a lot of sense. So velocities were right there where we should have expected and groups were outstanding. No really 
excellent standard deviation numbers, except for our lowest charges, you know, we're under 10, but you know, mostly right there in the mid, in the mid teens, a couple under 10, one over 20, and then the rest just kind of right there in the middle, which is not bad, right? That's not horrible. So this bullet is, you know, it's a short little fat bullet with a big blunt hollow point. So it's not exactly the super high ballistic coefficients, you know, stuff that we're shooting from other brands, like the 143 grain ELDX that flies like the wind blows, right? This is not exactly comparable to that. I was actually looking it up a few minutes ago. This has a ballistic coefficient of 355. Sierra does have 140 grain Game King, soft point Game King, that's a 495. So we might have to try that guy out at some point. But for my purposes where, you know, a two or 300 yard bullet for deer is all I'm really looking for. This, this fits the bill perfectly. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it's gonna perform into some gel here in a couple videos down the road. And after seeing how it's shot here with our, with our Thompson Center Compass, it's definitely on my list of good bullets, no doubt about it. So I don't think there's a whole lot more to say. Well, you know, we've got some good loads. I don't think we'll uh, shoot any more powders with this bullet here in the near term. We'll just move on to the next one. So we've already, we've already tested the 140 grain SST and the 143 grain ELDX. So I guess what we've got left, we've got a couple of 129 grain bullets, the 129 grain interlock and the 129 grain SST from Hornady. Uh, I've also got this 129 grain Nosler Acubond. That's uh, Acubond long range. There's a normal Acubond. I think it's a 140. I don't have it, but that uh, that's another one where you, we might add to the list at some point. So yeah, our next, our next uh, Creedmoor video, video here, I'll probably shoot the 129 grain SST. Yeah, if I do the 129 grain SST, then at that point, I mean, we've basically got these four ready. We could uh, go ahead and gel test those maybe. I don't know, I'll think it out, come up with a game plan. But for this one, I think we're done. Couldn't be happier with our Sierra Game King. So if you'd like to help support my channel, come to patreon.com reloading and I will see you guys next time.